G'day everyone, start to feel a little bit like Alice in Wonderland here on the hulls. Um, welcome to this episode. <laughs> That's the way it is on the hulls. G'day everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Life on the Hulls. It's starting to look a little bit like Alice in Wonderland there. The doors get smaller as you go further into the bow of the boat. This week, I'm uh, working in the port side of my boat here, and I've just glassed down the sole here over the top of the water tank, and we've been determining the uh, positions of these large modules that I have here, the head module and the large companionway. We already had a fair idea as to where they fit, but for now, we've been able to work out exactly to within a couple of millimeters as to where they sit, so that I can actually get this sole underneath me here on the fuel tank. Uh, locked down as I did last week on the starboard side. So lots going on here. Now this week I'm gonna basically be in the starboard side there. I'm gonna be putting in the road partitions and some wardrobes over in there so that I can really define and finish the structure, so to speak, down to where the engine bay modules are. So lots happening. Now don't forget to subscribe and also jump over to the composite shop. Uh, that channel there has, has got around about two and a half thousand subscribers. There's a lot of guys out there learning a little bit about the detail required to build composite kayaks. And I'm actually moving into other products as well, such as uh, hard tops and a whole lot of other things. So don't forget to uh, to like and comment and, uh, and I'll see you through the video. Let's get into it. First off the rank this week, uh, I'm filleting in the sole over the fuel tank here. Now you'll notice there, there's actually quite a substantial sea channel section there. That transpired from the uh, original um, floor adjustment I did way back when I installed the uh, the floor here. And, and what, what actually happened was I had to increase it by 30 millimeters to get it to the right height to suit the companion way. Now what's actually occurred as a result of that is a very strong sea channel there where I filleted it with extra filling compound and then also uh, three layers of 600 double bias which made that almost uh, possibly the most robust part of the boat. It also allowed for another electrical conduit run along that section there which I also have another one along the chine there as you can see. So there's plenty of access for uh, tubes and pipes and, and, and electrics and the like to run along this section here. Now I did have a lot of comments last week about why I didn't strap the tanks down, why I didn't actually add the plumbing for the actual fuel tank. Now I had to have two large access uh, hatches underneath where I'm sitting there, one in the forward section, one in the rear, where I'll be able to access absolutely everything inside this, uh, inside this tank compartment. Now I've actually worked on that principle all along. Right, uh, so I'm happy to say I've got this floor down, I've got these bulkhead uh, totally tabbed in. Now I can start working on putting these sections in. I can put in this bulkhead that fits here and the rear cabin, or the stern cabin on the starboard side, I can put in the actual engine bay bulkhead that goes above the, uh, above the engine bay and forms the basis of the queen size suite or the double bed at the back in the rear cabin. And once I get that in place, I can then put the wardrobe in here. So pretty happy, I'm gonna get onto it.
Look who showed up for work. Oh, well, I can't be everywhere, can I, son? <laughs> That's Johnny the rock star. Got a couple of my viewers, mate, they're wiser after you now. Oh, no, look, I've already got a headache at home. Why would I want a migraine? <laughs> Hell. This bugger's showing me up. I'm, it's my channel, John. But you're well, you're welcome to come and help any time because I need the help. I only give you a hand when you need it, mate. <laughs> Good on you, mate. No, so we've finished the floor here. It's sealed down. And we're, we're, we're locking this whole side down. John, and Johnny and I are just trying to work out. We're trying to get a couple of levels here. But uh, we're about to glue and fill it this... Uh, well, we're going to fill it in at least, aren't we, mate? Of course. Yeah, we're just trying to work out. Getting exactly level. It's looking pretty good. There's a little bit of... A little bit of fiddling going on here, but uh, we'll get it in and then tomorrow I'll be able to tab it in place because I've finished that one. I'll just put that divider in there for the for the, uh, for the the breezer just to make sure we're in the right spot and we are. So we'll get on with it. All right, so we've got it all square. It took a bit of work, didn't it, mate? Plenty of work, mate. Put in a couple of uh, little cleats. And I like. We're going we're gonna to fog it in, fill it in, and then try to square it up. And it's getting cold. Getting fresh. Action. We've got a little bag of grip. And have it nice and thick, stops it from drag sagging, so I'm hoping I've got it sat picking up. And then another bag here in Look at that. I love using this stuff. Well, because you got it so tight against the hole, it's going to have a lot squirted out, isn't it? Yeah, but I'll fill it. I'm not going to go down in that hole yet, there. Well, don't go all the way across there. Good. <laughs> What happened then? What happened? What do you mean? Oh, it squirted on one side. Very good. Very good, mate. That's it. See you, mate. Hit the Bundy car, that's it. Thank All you right. for your help. Thanks for your help again, mate. I'll be into it again tomorrow. Please, Cheers. Here, Cheers. Here Cheers, buddy. See ya. Yeah, we're about to jury rig you. We're about five mil out, I think, all up, but that's gonna be adjustable once I tie this bulkhead into this and all that strap's doing is just, just sort of positioning it. But yeah, that's filleted tomorrow morning. Come in, rip off the peel ply, get that tabbed in, and, uh, and she's done. Right, hey, so this is the rear uh, cabin on the starboard side, and this partition here, this partition bulkhead, actually forms the end of the double bed. And what I'll do is I'll just show you a bit of vision of actually the wall that I'm uh, putting in here. And this one here sits on top of the engine bay bulkhead, and then you've got the floor and then another bulkhead. So all of it is actually integrated into one, essentially one monocoque bulkhead. Uh, that forms all the way up to the height of the bed. Now, because it's such a, uh, uh, a barrier between the motors and the cabin, uh, this will be lined with, um, obviously, uh, fire insulation, etc., and probably have some sort of a hatch here and a fire extinguisher vent so that we can stick a fire extinguisher in and extinguish any fire that might generate inside the uh, the engine room. Now I'm planning to have a fire boy suppression system inside the engines as well, uh, just for that redundancy. But obviously those uh, that uh, our fire extinguisher valve or grommet, I guess you'd call it, that fits in here and goes into the engine bay room will uh, will be visible from the cabin so you can easily just whack it in and uh, and obviously put out a fire but i've just put a couple of cleats in here 
and here, and this is basically just going to be filleted, it's dropped straight in, and I'm going to tab it immediately, just get the thing immediately done so that, uh, you know, we're pretty much in place, and, and I'm pretty happy, I'm moving forward in a big way, I've got this bulk get in yesterday, this one in today, I'm pretty much working on that starboard cabin now, that rear cabin, and then I'm going to move over to the other side and start turning my attention to the other side, which is a lot more complicated. As you can see down here, by just running your, your um, radius tool, this is about a, a half inch radius here. Running it neatly, you can actually eliminate any waste or any, any mess um, along the, the substrate here like this. And it leaves you with that perfect little radius to then come in and, and apply your cloth. You can see that kicking off now, it's all going sort of a straw colour, which is what we want. Uh, and I don't want to wait too long before we hit it with some fresh resin, which will sort of help it to consolidate a bit, soften it up a little bit. I have had another very, very big day. Um, what I've done today is that partition there, which is the rear starboard cabin, I've actually filleted, glassed, and installed that entirely. And then I've put in the robe partition that goes in behind here. Now this MDF L-shaped template you can see here, which starts down here, and goes along all the way to there and then up is all gonna be one piece. And that'll be a face of foam. And then I'll either fair and paint, or I might lay up a layer of, um, of fresh white gel coat on a flat piece of glass with a layer of glass on it, or a layer of chop matting or something, and then just epoxy it to the actual wall. That's sort of the finish I'm after, and that sort of lets me replicate the modules that I've got here. And that means that all my um, cabinetry in the boat are all much the same. It's basically not going to vary too much because I don't want to have a painted surface there and a gel coat surface there. I like all the cabins to be consistent. And that's sort of how I'm thinking I'm going to do the trim and then the, uh, or the internal fit out. And then what I'll do is I'll do the trim with some wooden fiddles and, uh, and all that uh, sort of uh, architraves and things and the like, but yeah.
I think it's pretty clear that, uh, you know, throughout this build, I've been very um, meticulous about the templating. And I think that's 90% of this build has actually been templating so far. And then it's simply transferring onto the substrates that I've pre-made in, uh, in the factory up there. But having that bulk supply of 10 millimeter laminated foam has made some, a massive difference to my speed at this stage. And I know it slowed me up earlier on, but really increased the uh, ability to get this stuff installed. In the next episode, I'm going to be putting the road face or actually manufacturing the robe face to uh to give you a good feel for how this robe's going to look and uh, i hope you enjoyed the episode guys and uh and thanks for joining me and don't forget to give it a like and uh, and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed thanks guys i'll uh, see you next time on life on the holes